Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Magnus and today we're going to talk about the CPX 360 2023. Actually we're mostly going to talk about the user group. I don't know if you're aware of what CPX is, but CPX is like the big event that Checkpoint has each year in uh, more or less in Asia, Americas and EMEA. The last two years it has been virtual. I'm starting to get really fed up of virtual event and that's... I don't know if that's hypocrite because I'm, uh, I don't know, sending these videos on YouTube and I actually don't like to, <laughs> to watch like an event for three days online on, on videos, but there are reasons for it. So there is a reason why you want to keep down the videos on YouTube below like 20 minutes because the attention span of people is normally lower than 20 minutes. Some kinds, it's only it's only a few seconds actually. But if you're expecting people to like attend virtually, sit two three days on the computer, at home, or in the office, and don't get distracted by something else, you're kidding yourself. When you sit at home and you have like one screen with the use with um, with the CPX event or any virtual event. You still respond to your emails, you still do work, you still attend meetings. It's not the same thing. Um, the production quality of Checkpoint's event has been really good actually. And when I say the production quality, I don't mean the presenters, I mean the recordings, the green screens, the graphics, the information. That's high production quality. Actually a lot of the presenters has been I mean, when, you, when you're creating a YouTube channel or recording videos online like this, they say that the first 100 videos, yeah, the first 100 videos, they're crap. <laughs> and it's really true. If you check my previous videos from far behind, like the videos I did two years ago, it's not the same. You don't talk the same way into like the camera so you you so you get the same feeling like you're talking to someone outside it's more or less you read from a script so you see your eyes go like this back and forward and you talk like you don't look at the camera lens it look like this and you still talk it's it feels really strange for someone that is watching and this is hard. It's really hard to learn. And some of the presenters that is recording these videos, they're standing in a studio in Israel or in America or whatever. They have big studio lights pointing on you. And then you have like green screens behind you. You have a more or less TV crew. And then you're reading from a teleprompter. And most of the times, I don't know if this is the case here, Someone else write it for you. And then you need to have the pacing correctly. So how fast you talk if you want to emphasize something. This is hard. And you also, you want to write text in the teleprompter the way you speak. Not the way you read or write normally. So you need to, you need to write it like you talk. It's also strange. And it's hard to, I don't know, make jokes. I don't know, I, I start to feel more comfortable. So I don't know, I, I put in strange words or, yeah. I, it gives a bit more personality. And it's hard to, to really do this if you are not used to talk on camera. I mean, I have been doing this for two years now and my first 100 videos was absolutely horseshit. <laughs> So they were crap. <laughs> but the, the production quality itself from, from Checkpoints is, is actually good. So if we just check on Checkpoints website, it's like keynotes, presenters. You can go into like a specific uh, um, video here. It's loading fast, green screen, you have a presenter. I mean, they do everything correct. It's just hard to have the attention span for 
two, three full days. So anyway, how was CPX this year? So first of all, it was a hybrid event. So with a hybrid event, it meant like they had like a centralized hub in each country or in each continent. So when it was now in EMEA uh, last week, actually, so the centralized hub was planned to be London. And then Checkpoint, of course, changed venue. So it changed to somewhere in, in Germany and then they changed again. Checkpoint really likes to like, I don't know, I, I, will, I will say it's bad planning. It's horrible planning. When you're expecting customers or partners to travel to somewhere, you need to announce it in time. It's not good enough to announce it two months in advance. It's not good enough to change venue. You need to, I mean, when I go to other events, like the first thing or the last thing that happens in that event is they say, welcome next year, we will be in this city, or at least they say, we will have the event this date. Please save the dates. We will be somewhere in Europe. Checkpoint needs to start to do that. And I also expect Checkpoint to have a real physical event in 2024. Hopefully they live stream it. But it needs to be like one venue with like, I don't know, five, six, seven thousand people. And then you stream from there. So what's the reason why you want to have a physical event? So other than the attention span and that people don't really check for two, three days. You also needed like the social part. So CPX, believe it or not. It's one of the few times I actually meet colleagues from different departments within our, our company that work with Checkpoint. It happens more than one time, if I say like this, that I'm starting to talk to someone like, yeah, you're Swedish, oh, perfect. So what do you work with? Oh, I work with Checkpoint. Ah, oh, what company do you work for? And then they say like, yeah, I work for Tele2. Like, what? I also work for Tele2. <laughs> so Checkpoint or other other vendors to say connecting people within the companies because the companies are so big now they spread out everywhere everyone work from home you don't see each other in offices i mean for tele2 my the company i work for i think we have like 25 30 offices and all the people within the teams are spread out all the departments are spread out i mean my own team we we work in like six different offices we try to see each other like maybe, I don't know, one, two times per quarter, but to, to other like departments and so on. Yeah, it's like one time per year maybe. So it's, it's really different. So having the physical event to be able to, to talk to, well, your own colleagues actually, <laughs> but also to customers. We don't do so much physical customer meetings anymore. And it's a different venue. It's a different like feeling if you're away somewhere. So one of the thing that has me going to the user group or to the CPX from year to year, there are, there are multiple parts. Before the event, there has been like a training day. So you can attend like a course, five, six hours course and then extend all your certificates. That's perfect. It's really a valid reason to justify a trip somewhere in Europe as well. Like if I go here, I can attend this training and I recertify all my certificates. Problem solved. <laughs> so that's one major reason to, to be able to travel, to, uh, to attend one of these courses, to be able to attend this um, this event. The other part is user group. And I'm not sure if all the countries in the in the world has user group, but Sweden have actually had a user group for a really long time. I think it's like 17 years. 15, 17 years. Someone can correct me. 
and it has been in, in like various states and various people joining it. I have been included in the user group for like, I think eight years. I've actually been the moderator for the last three years. So, hey. <laughs> and then you ask like, what the hell is a user group? Well, it's, uh, the CPX is normally divided into to like the training day, a partner and uh, SKO like sales stuff for for checkpoints so partners and checkpoint employees has one day and during this one day normally customers they travel in this day but we have normally the user group that day so it's a place where we don't have any consultants we only have actual customers like people that actually work with the products so I work for an MSP and we are providing services to customers, but the customer doesn't really buy the firewall itself. Like the firewall is not the service. It's used to protect the service that they buy. So I'm a user of Checkpoint, meaning I'm a customer of Checkpoint, as well as the company itself is a partner. So I'm allowed to attend the, the user group. And normally like the largest customers within the within Sweden is um, is represented there so like the, the banks uh, some gaming companies some uh, large I don't know what it's called mis municipality yeah government stuff um, and then it's like I understand like the feeling from from a vendor like yeah are you really going to put like 20 customers together in one in one room what if they discussed like discounts? What if they like gather against us and it doesn't really work like that. Of course, it depends on what type of user group that you have, but it's one of the few places where you can talk openly to other technicians and like, we are planning to do this. How did you solve it? Or is anyone using this product? or this blade or this function, is it working for you? Is anyone like, uh, has everyone upgraded to a specific version? Have you experienced issues? How do you do it? It's a very open discussion on products, features like, and also what we want as a community to checkpoint to improve or to work on, to give feedback to checkpoint. And it's, it's easier when you are a few customers. I mean, if all the service providers and all the like banks and whatever within Sweden wants the same thing, there is a lot of money and a lot of people behind it. And it's also something that is important for the community, for the users that is actually using your product. So in the beginning, I think it was, quite hard for Checkpoint to actually accept this. Um, but now they, at least here in Sweden, they really, they really use it to their advantage. I think it's valuable for them as well. So the last years, um, Dorit Dor has actually attended the user group, not, not the day during discussion, but they come like the last hour of the day and take the feedback and maybe do some small presentation for the community. And <laughs> it's, um, yes, she is the same way on stage as she is um, in, the co in the community. It's like military discipline, like <laughs> So if she bring like her, sure, I, I don't want to say minions because they're not minions, but if, if she bring like her team of R&D VPs or directors or whatever, like product managers, it's really like, do you fix this? You ask this, you... <laughs> Sometimes it's fucking scary, <laughs> but it's cool. So this year, actually, Gerd Dorfman did attend our user group. And this year it was, I think it was quite easy for Jera. If you're watching this, you can um, send me a message if it was or not. <laughs> um, but I mean, Checkpoint product has improved. 
They have improved a lot actually. It's much easier to work with them, they are much more stable. A lot of the features that we have been requesting has been uh, delivered now. So as a Curiosa, I, I don't know if it's called a Curiosa in, in English as well, but funny story. So when I first started, the when I first like attended the user group, I asked like uh, Dorit or, or Checkpoint like, this with VPNs, it really sucks. Like, why do we have like one VPN domain per gateway? Like, no one else is doing that. And it was like, oh, I never heard of that before. And then all the ones in the user group, like, yeah, we experienced this this issue as well. Like, Cisco don't do it this way. Fortigate don't do it this way. Juniper don't do it this way. You're the only one that do it this way. And I'm referring to like the supernetting and only the uh, domains within one gateway, not per community. And this was something that we took up like, I think it took seven years. <laughs> so we asked for this every single time, like, how is it going with the VPN stuff? And finally, when it was like, R8040, I believe it was fixed. Then the Ritz like, you know what? Now it's fixed. <laughs> and and jokingly aside, like, yeah, now we have the next part. So sometimes it takes a long period of time. So you need to really be consistent and you need to emphasize like why you need a specific feature. And I mean, nothing was really broken. So I mean, it, it did work, but you needed to use like a user def file to don't get super netting, to really announce specific networks to a specific peer. <sighs> Shouldn't be that complicated. But I just wanted to, to mention it as like, we as a, as a community has the possibility to give feedback to the vendor and they will not implement it directly. They will, they will maybe not, never implement it, but at least we have the possibility to give the feedback and to feel listened to. So the user group has been really valuable for me. It's, it's one of the few places where you don't need to care about what you say. So user group, perfect. Extended on certificates, perfect. And then we have this to travel someplace warm. Normally CPX is like in February, March. It's quite nice to go to like, I don't know, Spain, Amsterdam. I mean, it has been in like Vienna, Berlin, um, Milano, Barcelona, a lot of nice places. <laughs> I want to go somewhere again. Um, so you have the possibility to both talk to customers, other partners, other technicians, and you can do it over a few beers. Really nice. I mean, we still did drink. I, I didn't drink so much, uh, just to emphasize that. But some nice food, some nice company, quite nice. I will just add a bunch of pictures here from from uh, from Stockholm where I attended. So how was the event itself? I mean, the event was limited to 350, 400 people, not a lot. It was late announced, so not everyone was aware of it. Really bad planned actually, quite annoying. But it felt good to be on a physical event where you can have a champagne, talk to people, listen to some presentations. And some of the, uh, the presentation that was performed live was actually quite good. Uh, some of the presentations were streamed. So they had like a hub, hub in, in uh, I think in Germany, in Munich, München. I don't know how you say it in English. Never mind. Uh, where like uh, Gil did have his keynotes, Dorit did has her um, roadmap. If you have never checked Dorit's roadmap, 
I think it should be like a meme. <laughs> it's like, yeah, now we're going to have the roadmap presentation. It's 150 slides in 50 minutes. <laughs> and it's like, it's like a machine gun, like <laughs> if you like blink, then you miss something. So I try to record it all the time, but um, Checkpoint don't want to have it online. And uh, I don't know, like a few thousand people is watching it live, but Dorit is doing it so fast. So it's hard to remember it. And it's, it's quite cool because it has been like that, like, yeah, we're going to have this presentation and uh, it, it feels like it gets more and more slides and less and less time. So it's it's like a joke, <laughs> but it's uh, it's funny. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Either way, if you see me in, ah, I, I need to say this as well. Um, there was uh, not super many, but it was like, I don't know, 10, 15 people that uh, actually mentioned my, my YouTube channel. It's quite cool. So I feel like a celebrity. <laughs> Maybe within checkpoint I am, but uh, anyway, it it was um, nice to see you guys, and uh, I hope to see you soon again. Anyway, if you see me in um, in an event, stop by and say hi. If you did take your certificate and passed it because of my videos, you owe me one beer. Yes, so you know. That's the cost of taking this training on YouTube. <laughs> anyway, take care. Cheers. Bye.